Hi guys, um, welcome to lesson number three. I hope you enjoyed the first two. Um, I don't know about you, but I was kind of missing having color. <laughs> so this week, I'm gonna have you working with a creative color wheel. And I have some slides to give you ideas that I'm gonna share with you in a moment. And, but I also wanna talk about how an artist uses a color wheel. This is our creative color wheel, and you're going to have so many options as to how you complete this project. I want to start off with what is a color wheel? A color wheel is when you put all of the colors of the rainbow together in one after the other in order. So as you can see, we have our primary colors which are red, yellow, and blue. And then from there, we, you, they're called primary because you cannot make them. You cannot make red by mixing two colors together. You cannot make blue by mixing two colors together. And you cannot make yellow by mixing two colors together. That's why they're called primary. You have to have them to begin with. When you mix two primary colors together, you get what's called the secondary colors. For example, red and yellow, when you mix them together, become orange. Yellow and blue mix together to become green. And then blue and red mix together to become violet or purple. And then the next step would be what's called tertiary colors. And those are the colors that have like the two names because you're mixing together a primary and a secondary color together to become a new color. So if you think about it, primary means one, secondary or second, and then tertiary is the three. So one, plus the secondary equals the tertiary. So in this case, it was red and violet combined to make red-violet. Blue and green combined to make blue-green. And the tertiary colors can go all the way around. So how does an artist use color? Why is the color wheel important? Well, first of all, the, an artist will use the color wheel to set a mood for their painting or their um, design. So if you wanted it to look very peaceful or calm, you would use different colors than if you wanted it to look very vibrant and exciting. In this case, Picasso used it and it was kind of wants you to make the viewer look almost sad when he looks at it. Here's another. These are monochromatic, meaning these artists used the colors all from one color family. So we've got all different shades of blue for this one. Sometimes an artist wants to make things stand out. So in order to do this, they use what's called complementary colors or opposites on a color wheel. For example, the majority of Van Gogh's painting is blue and shades of blue. Then to make the stars and everything really stand out, what he did was he used an opposite color. And that's what why those stars really stand out. And the same thing with Edvard Munch's painting, the color contrast. So when you go to do your color wheel, think of ways that you could do it. You could draw a flower and then find a way to maybe start in the center with red and then work your way out to orange, then yellow, then green, then blue, then purple. 
or you could do what this artist did here and do it as each petal. An umbrella is circular, so you can most definitely do that. So this is if you have access to things like paint or colored pencil or even marker. Here's another idea. It looks exactly like the color wheel that I showed you in the beginning, but they changed it and turned it into an eye. A few more ideas, depending on what you have available to you at your house. Here's another. Isn't that a fun idea? If you don't have access to paint or colored pencils or crayons to make it with, you can use snacks. <laughs> and then you get to take a, just make sure you take a picture of your artwork before you eat it. <laughs> okay, so you'll have something to send to me. Here's a fun one if you're very crafty and you have maybe tissue paper or something like that and you want to make something fun. This is going to take a while, so choose wisely. Something like this would take a long time. So if you want to have some fun with it, though, and you have the time, this might be cool. You might just take your crayons or colored pencils or markers and set them up in a way that becomes a color wheel. How simple is that idea? You put the colors in order, take a photo, and you have your color wheel. There we go. Once again, please don't eat your color wheel before you take a picture. <laughs> but what a fun way for someone who likes to bake. And this is kind of the idea that I had when I did mine. And I'll show you mine in a moment. But I wanted to take magazines and cut out all different colors. I didn't worry too much about what it was a picture of. And what I did is I just took some magazines and catalogs and things like that that I had around the house. And I will tell you that this takes a lot of organization. It took me a long time to cut all those little pictures out. But you'll see what I ended up making in a moment. There we go. We just had Easter. If you celebrate Easter and you have some Easter eggs around, maybe they're the colors you need for your color wheel. Food. Can you tell I enjoy food? But anyway, if you have fruit in the house, here's a cool way to do a color wheel. Once again, don't eat it before you take a picture. <laughs> but here's a fun way to add color and take a photo. Cereal. If you have some fun sugary cereal that's all different colors, find a way to do it. Toys. Maybe you have some toys in your house and they're all like really cool, fun colors and you have to arrange them into the color wheel in order and then take a photo. What a fun idea that is. Don't make your mom crazy though. Make sure you put the toys away after you take the picture. All right. So those are just some ideas. So you can take those ideas and you can kind of run with them. If you ever made, like, I don't know, if you have macaroni noodles and you want to dye those in different colors and make a necklace or <laughs> anything that you can think of, it does not have to be exactly the way I showed you on this samples. Those are just ideas. Um, if you can, if maybe you have lots of nail polish of all the different colors. Maybe you could paint your nails. <laughs> maybe you could just take picture of the bottles of nail polish and make them um, look like the color wheel. So these are just ideas. Sorry, guys, I'm trying to think of guy ideas too. <laughs> but um, you can totally run with this and make it what you want. So I'm gonna show you what I ended up making and then the steps on how I made it come later. Um, do I expect you guys all to have this in your home? Absolutely not. And like I said on the video, um, this 
cutting out all these pieces. See how I kind of tried to make one color go into the next? So we have the reds, we have the oranges, we have the, then it transfers over to this one where we have the yellows and the greens. And then I have my T, so it spells art, and we go from the greens to the blues to the violet. So all together, I have my letters that I happen to have, um, and they're done. And I have my creative color wheel that's not even a circle. See, doesn't even have to be a circle. So you can have fun with it and make what you want. So this is what I made today. Why don't I get you started to show you how I made it? Hi, my original plan was to just use this circle cardboard and it was difficult to figure out um, the math that was involved to get all of the spaces. Um, and then as I was doing it, I realized I wanted to have a little more fun with it. So then I found this lovely thing that I thought I could decoupage or put the glue on and do that. And then I changed my mind again. So in pure artist form, we're always changing. So as I was cleaning, I found some ceramic letters that I never got around to paint. So I have some really cool things for my art room next year. I got A-R-T, and I think that's what I'm going to be using to make my creative color wheel. That was a lot of cutting. <laughs> um, once I was done, I separated all of the colors so that I would be organized and ready to go. So I'm going to get started on what I'm making today. So here I have my letter A and I kind of wiped it down ready to go and I have a little bit of water that I'm just going to add regular glue to to kind of thin the glue out. I'm just going to put some of that in the little pickle jar <laughs> and then I'm going to use a brush to just mix it up. You don't need a lot of ton of water because it's going to just to thin out the glue a little bit. So now I'm going to grab my colors and I'm going to start with the reds and I'm going to move the reds along and go from there. So I'm just going to take some pictures, figure out where I kind of want them to be. And then I'm going to start applying them. Take a little bit of the glue mixture, place it on there, and glue it on. I'm going to worry about the edges later. I'm not worried about them right now. Right now I'm just kind of placing the colors where I want them. A little more glue. And I'm just going to continue this on. And once they were done, I allowed it to dry a little bit, and now I'm going to work on bending it over the edges to make all that sticking out take care of that and make the letter come back. This was so much fun. <laughs> I got so dirty. <laughs> My fingers were full of glue. 
but I had a lot of fun making it. So I hope whatever you decide, you have fun making yours as well. So get creative, look around what you have, and come up with your really cool idea to make your own creative color wheel. Have a good day.